who recently filed for office and there were dozens of people lined up to, to file for that office, but he, when they found out he was running, he just scared them all away. <laughs> so he's got a four-year term unopposed coming at him. This will be your third term? Yes. So this will be eight years, uh, which is great. So let's give a warm welcome for our county clerk, Doug Cruz. ago I lost my voice and somebody said that at a meeting that, that I was at and said well the meeting is, won't last as long because I lost my voice. Um, I just kind of want and this is the first time I've spoken public about what the clerk's office has done uh, as far as the latest thing we've done but let me back up to whenever I was first elected I saw started looking at all the vote totals after the election was over with and we've seen that that we had some polling sites that was just completely overrun on election day. And the worst one was East End. So uh, I started looking at East End thinking about a, uh, East End's the only box I lost, by the way. And uh, I sort of went had a place to have an early voting site down there and, and uh, found one. So we jumped off into that and, and opened up that early voting site, which made us, have what at Hot Springs Village on that side of the county, and we've got East End on that side of the county, we've got Benton, and we have Bryan. So we're, we're pretty well covered on our early voting center. And then as time started with that down at East End, I really started pushing early voting. I mean, there was a lot of times I was out at midnight putting up signs to go early vote. And, and let me tell you, Candace, something. When you're putting up signs to tell people just to go vote, when you're not telling them to go vote for somebody, everybody lets you put a sign up. <laughs> they believe in going and voting, and, uh, which made that easier job. But we got our vote totals up on early voting. The last primary that we had, we had over 70% of the people voted early. So as time progressed through this, there was also another plan kind of in the background of that all ties this together. The state was talking about getting us new voting equipment for all the counties in the state. Well, of course, it was appropriated, but it was never funded. So we don't have our equipment. So we start cutting getting decks today. The big primary we had and the big general that we had. And I went to the court <coughs> and I asked them for $140,000. And uh, now that'll make you nervous when you ask me for that much money. And we got it, and we bought poll books with it, electronic poll books. That made all the difference in the world in that election because it kept the lines moving. And you don't want to see people standing out there 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, up to two hours in some places across the state. Yeah, if somebody stands in line to vote for two <laughs> hours, let me tell you something, they're a patriot. They are a patriot. But we don't want that to happen in Saline County. So we started going towards the the vote centers and the equipment, but we didn't get the equipment. So all these counties across the state that was so-called the pilot counties or some counties that was having some problems, they got new voting equipment. So that means there was these old electronics left all across the state from different people, so we started gathering them up. And we gathered up enough to have this election coming up to be all electronic. Now that's kind of, there'll still be paper ballots used as far as provisionals go. But uh, we're going not to polling sites. We have reduced the number of polling sites, which I know that that is not a popular thing to say, but everything's gonna be vote centers. It's just like when you go early vote, anybody that walks in there that's a registered voter in Saline County can vote. Any polling site that used to be polling sites out vote centers, with the exception of the ones we consolidated, you can stop there. You're working in that area. You can stop there. You can go in and vote. Now, I'm sure there's questions in your minds of well, what's going to keep me from going to this location and head down the street and go to this location. The poll books do. They're tied in with the internet, it's a secure site, 
The poll books, however, are not tied in whatsoever with the voting machines. You cannot, you cannot hack into the poll books to get to the votes. That's just virtually impossible. But it is impossible because you have, you would have to have a connection to it. So, so we keep it going. <laughs> <on. laughs> so, so these poll books, as soon as you vote, and believe you me, we we tested these things out a bunch before we ever put them out there to use. When you vote, it's not instant but it's within 15 to 20 seconds of when you vote, there's gonna be an update on it. And when it updates, it updates every poll book across Lynn County. So as far as that, you know, I, I had my doubts about it when we first got it because I'm a hands-on, I like to see it work. As a matter of fact, the first election we had, we also printed our <coughs> paper books because if they just messed up, I wanted something to fall back on. You know, I didn't want to say, hey, we don't have books here because we depend on this electronics. But they're real dependable. Uh, but the vote centers, I'm real excited about that. Uh, Saline County is it's a large county. And once you run a countywide race, you really know how big it is. And when you go out, I've got a map up here just to let y'all know how we the sites that we consolidated, uh, and then we have one new site that replaced one. So if you look here, you have to go with your geography of the county first, because you look at, right here's one, here's one, here's one, and here's one on this side of the county, they're all right at the edge of the county, basically. Because these people down in here, they have a long ways to drive to early vote. <coughs> So right in here, you got an early vote site close to here. And then you come on up here and you've got Perrin. Of course, that is isolated. And you come on <laughs> down here on this side, you've got a villa that's over here. Uh, and you've got Olive Hill over here. <coughs> and then you come back to here in the city of Benton and Bryant. The city of Bryant, they had polling sites that was just a tad over a mile away. And then City of Benton, within a mile and a half, you had like five polling locations. Poll workers, they go out there, they spend 12 to 13 hours on election day. They're getting older, like we're all getting older, but you just take, think for a minute of when you go vote, the people that's there that has waited on you for years and years and years, and you look at them and you just think about their age. Think about the ones that's been there, been voting a while, the ones that has been there and now they're no longer there. And it, it is hard to find poll workers. So, vote centers, uh, you're gonna reduce the number of, of poll polling sites change some right around it, change all of them into vote centers. So on the primary election, it's not gonna save us a whole lot of money on the primary because it's reimbursed by the state. Mm -hmm. That's what the, uh, what's the general was. But <coughs> when it comes up to the general, just in the early figures that we got on it, and this is bare minimum, because you know, you don't want to get up here and say something and then it not turn out that way. <laughs> the bare minimum that we would say would be just a little over $11,000, and that's in labor cost. That is That includes nothing else, that's just labor. And then you look at, at ballots. We still had to order a lot of ballots this time because of provisional ballots. You know, we, uh, we've got 54 ballot styles in Saline County. The last primary we had, we had eight. School elections. Yep, school elections was thrown in there, and that's that's the increase right there for that. So, on the provisionals, we still have to send out those printed ballots, those provisional ballots used for provisionals. We're still sending ten of each ballot style to each polling site. Which, keep in mind, there's 54 ballot styles. 10 of each one of them. You know, it's a 
a big hassle, but you have to do it because just as sure as you did not send one of those ballots to all, that's when that person would walk in there and want to vote. You know, in that in that precinct or district or award or whatever. So it is uh it's something that I've been looking forward to going to. I wish we had the new equipment to do it, but we do have electronic equipment to do it now. Uh, of course, we'll lose a bunch of them throughout the election because they're getting old. They're starting to fall apart. Uh, it seems like when you start transporting, things happen to them, and, and we just have to take them out of service. Are we still talking about the poll? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, not the poll. Come on now. But the, uh, uh, we're, we're able to do this because of the electronics. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, when we get the new equipment, and I feel confident in the next couple of years we'll have it. But uh, is there any questions on the uh, vote centers? Yeah. On the 15 to 20 second update, is that, you said all the books will be updated, that prevents one person from voting at multiple times? Yes, yes. Got a question on, I may be the only one who doesn't know it, but uh, the, I understand, when's the early voting start and go to? Number one, I agree with you pushing the early yeah. voting. That's a great idea, and I've heard more and more people say, man, I need to get out and early vote. That, and it gives them time, kind of like I take my time to vote, and I don't have to be in a crowd or anything. It also relieves some of your, your pressure as well, mm -hmm. um, and probably release the thing. This, that's, to me, is probably one of the best solutions of, of overcrowded polling places. Uh, but anyway, can you tell me more about the, the dates? Uh, it's, it's, you have two weeks of early voting. And starts on on the seventh, okay. May the seventh, and then two weeks from when that starts, then you'll have the election day. Now, we have these early vote sites. Two of them we have open on election day. And the reason for that is because on election <coughs> day they were also poll poll sites. And we were having people come up and turn away. We'd have to turn them away because we couldn't vote there because it was a polling site. So we changed that, and that which gave us two more sites a couple of years ago. But that turned out great to get them there. One of the other things uh, uh, on your question about uh, about the the early vote all the way up to election day. Of course, if it was me, it would start on a Tuesday, go all the way through. And end on the Tuesday. But the way early voting is set up through the state, early voting is one election. One election. Then you have to break everything down and set everything else back up. So if it would just go all the way through as one election, it would be great. And of course, they've got their reasons, I guess, for having it that way. Shelly had a question. Yeah. Well, he's, he's still got, I'm going to do a follow-up question. One of the other things is that it, what I hear a lot is that people are trying to find where to vote. And uh, they're still they're still not sure. And I know they showed on the Secretary of State's website. And, and so at least I've seen the, the prompt for it. But I'm just wondering if uh, if there's any way that we could get that word out to people, you know, because they wait till the last minute. But they need some place to go to where they can actually say, where do I vote at? Because I've been, I've gone to polling sites and said, well, "This is what I thought I voted at," and they tell me, "Your name's not here, but we." And I'm going, "What? How many times y'all heard that? Anybody else?" I've heard it a bunch. Well, I know you have. You know, and this right here, wherever you go, you'll be able to vote if you're a registered voter in Saline County. With this one, yes, right? yes. yes, with us, supposed, us going to vote centers that enables us to do that all over. Good. So I've got two questions. Uh, one is normally we're used to going in and we're going to vote and we see this big book that they open and they turn around and we sign it. Is there still the paper book that we sign or we sign it on an electronic you thing? Will, or? You will sign the actual electronic <coughs> book. Okay. You know, just like you, you use your credit card somewhere and you sign, you'll sign on that. Okay, gotcha. The other thing is... I forgot. Come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if you think I'm not calling. <laughs> just want to remind all you candidates running for the first time, if you have opposition, the percentage then cited for early voting changes entirely the way you have to run. 
Christ, and we stand around and wait until it's auction day to get the word out to your people. And it says two thirds of them or more will already have left. So it really makes your campaign hard here. Really. I'm glad it wasn't that way when I was here. Because <laughs> <laughs> especially now, you need those extra two weeks of campaign. Exactly. And and to let people know about the election coming up and to let people know about we're going to vote centers that you can vote at all these places, we are going to have a mail out. Now, it's a pretty pricey expense on mailing out to every household in Saline County that has registered voters in it. We're not going to send them to every registered voter with their name on it, but if they're in a household, we will. If there's one person there, they still get one of them. <coughs> yes, Angie. The early voting sites, will each of those be vote centers on election day? Yeah. That's what he's saying. And how many total vote centers will there be? The, the early vote sites like down at East End? Right. No, that will not be. That'll go back over to the Baptist Church. The way, since that one's been up, what we do is we go in there, we break that pole down because it's a smaller area, and we move it over to the Baptist Church where Everybody down there knows on election day that's where the vote. Of course, we also put signs up at where the early vote is. Okay, one more question because we got a bunch of things on. Yeah. Uh, I do quick things. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming the absentee ballot uh, process is still the same. Yes. Okay. And how many polling places were there originally, and how many will there be now? Originally, or before we, before we, before we, oh, before you we're them. reducing them by, by nine. We had. If you looked on the paperwork, it looked a little bit different because it was precincts. And we had to split some precincts, but those precincts were still in the same voting location, you know, your, your actual poll site. So we're going from 36, you know, down to 24, 25. And, uh, and two of those are the ones that were actually early voting that we are making you know, a vote center on election day also, mm -hmm. where we don't have to turn away people that comes in to vote. Vote building. Yeah, the vote here building. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sure that will stick around. Uh, if you do have individual questions, you might want to ask him after the meeting. Hopefully, he'll still be here. Okay, uh, next up, as most of you know, uh, Kim Hammer has announced he's running for state senate. As a result, we have a vacancy in State Representative District 28, and two Republicans have filed for that position, and they are both here tonight, and we've given both of them an opportunity to speak for five minutes. We're going to be pretty generous as they're winding down. We won't come and get a hook or something and hook them on. But um, they drew for order, and the first one up is Jason Kelly. Jason? Thank you, and thank you for having us here tonight. Um, a little about myself. Um, I brought my wife, Jennifer, with me of 17 years. <laughs> she's on the left. Um, she's a teacher in the Benton School District. We have two boys, uh, Eli, 13, and Colt, 8. Um, I grew up in Saline County. I grew up in western Saline County on a small farm. Um, my, my father was a truck driver for Rick's Tractor Company. My mother was a nurse at Saline Hospital. Hospital. Um, I went to Glen Rose High School in, in uh, Hot Spring County, and I went on to play, uh, go to college at the University of Arkansas at Monticello, where I played basketball. Received a BS degree there uh, in health and wellness with a specialty in cardiac rehab. And then I had the luxury of going to um, St. Vincent's, and they hired me in their cardiac rehab department in that. Uh, about six months later, I was laid off there because of, and I, and I blame Dr. Murphy all the time when I see him, because the Arkansas, Arkansas Heart Hospital absorbed most of the cardiac patients. So, um, and then what I, it, it just by luck, I fell out, I applied for the uh, program director job at the Boys and Girls Club of Saline County. I was there in October 1st of 1998, started out as the program director and then went from there to the Director of Operations, and now uh, in 2007, I was hired as the CEO. Uh, in 2007, when I was hired, we had two clubs. Uh, we had about 10 employees, um, and uh, <coughs> uh, uh, we were operating in the red, and a lot of you guys know that they're in this building, that we, that we were struggling at that time. Since then, 
Uh, we have five uh, facilities. We run between 80 and 90 employees at a time. Last year we had 118 different employees. Uh, we have a budget of 2.4 million. Um, in 2014, we were selected as a lead agency in the state of Arkansas. What that means is, is on a uh, annual basis, I go up to Washington, D.C. and represent uh, all the Boys and Girls Clubs in the state of Arkansas once to twice a year. And then during session at our state capitol, I represent all the Boys and Girls Clubs uh, on issues that are regarding children in the state of Arkansas. Uh, I'm running for this position because nobody talked me into it. My wife and I sit down back in January of 2017, struggled with this decision. I felt like it was the best decision. Um, I'm very busy, uh, and I'm busy because I want to be busy. I'm busy because I love serving the children and, and families in this community and in this county. Uh, there's three things that I'm extremely passionate about. Number one is uh, I work closely, uh, weekly if not daily, with uh, departments and divisions in the state of Arkansas, either the Department of Workforce Services, DHS, or the one I'm most passionate about is Division Youth Services, where we have over 300 kids that are adjudicated in the state of Arkansas. We have eight facilities across the state. We are very inefficient. Uh, we have a lot of redundancy in services, and we can provide much better services if we really start looking at hard in the state of Arkansas. Uh, the second thing is, is our community. Um, we, we still, we, we have a, uh, we have the, the fastest growing trend in the state of Arkansas right now, and I wish it was something great, but it's not, it's opioid. And the opioid use and the and abuse that we have. Um, I've worked with Chief Lane or, or Drug Czar uh, Kirk Lane uh, many times on how to address this issue. Recently, between 2016 and 2017, we grew 14% in uh, opioid abuse. So that's a scary thing. I, I, I call it the next cancer. And, it's, and it will affect us. If it, if, if it doesn't affect you right now, it will. And it's gonna affect you because your insurance rates and our crime rates. Um, insurance company looks at your zip code and when you have high opioid and crime rates, your insurance rates are gonna go up. So we're top 10 in the state of Arkansas as far as opioid abuse and abuse. And that's something that we must address. And the last thing that I'm extremely passionate about is since I work with children, uh, are, the, are the children that we have, we have, we have quality schools in our in our county, and in our county, we unfortunately sometimes we we tell our kids that they're a societal failure non-verbally if they don't go and get a four-year college degree, and and that is a passion of mine. What I see is is our we see our kids going to a four-year college degree and they can't make it either financially, socially, economically, educationally, and they come back here and they become statistics either crime or opioid or drug. And so I, I feel like that we should address that. We should address that in middle school, junior high, and, and all the way up. So 30 seconds, I see that. <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing I, I'll just say is I'm honored to run for this position. Um, I do know this for a fact. I do know that the healthcare experts tell me that I've got more years behind me than I do in front of me. But I'm willing to work to make a difference in this community, in this district, uh, with the children and families that we serve. Thank you for your time. I hope that's it. And the individual who drew number two is Carrie Murphy. Carrie. Yes, sir. I appreciate y'all all coming out tonight. There might be some of you here that don't know me. Uh, my name is uh, Carrie Murphy. I'm running for state rep for District 28. Kim Hammer is a friend and a great conservative leader that's done a great job for our community. And I want to, uh, he's running for Senate now, so I definitely want to keep the conservative values that he's upheld for our community going forward. I tell you a little bit about myself, somebody that doesn't know. I grew up in Saline County. I graduated from Bryan, uh, attended ULR, uh, joined the Marine Corps, uh, served in Desert Shield and Desert Storm fought over there. Uh, no greater honor for any uh, person and vet to lay your life on the line for your country. And I, I have a very strong commitment to service for community and our country. Uh, I'm always going to stand for the pledge. I'm going to, I'm not kneeling for anything. Uh, the stuff that's been going on lately, um, that's one of the things that gets me all, you know, worked up and wants me to run because the way the country's been going with, uh, how they treat the flag, how they make the anthem, how they uh, transgender bathrooms. I mean, I've been married for 25 years. My wife, Audra, supports me. Uh, she's uh, uh, 
Uh, I know it's the silver anniversary and I have to buy something silver. I've been told so. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have a daughter, Madison. She goes to A-State. Uh, she'll be our junior next year. <coughs> so raising my family in Saline County, good Christian values, going to church, uh, you know, helping folks out. Uh, you know, I'm a small business owner. Uh, Y'all may know me from the Saline County Gun and Knife Show. Uh, I do shows, gun shows all over the state, plus some other businesses. But the gun shows, um, you know, being the Marine Corps, and nobody's going to work harder to protect their Second Amendment rights. I know that's a hot mm -hmm. topic right now. It may not be in Arkansas, but states around us and, and other places, California, all of it trickles down and eventually comes to us. I will protect it, uh, and nobody will fight harder. Uh, being in the Marine Corps, you learn to make tough decisions. Uh, been on city council for eight years in Benton. And sometimes you have to make a tough decision in a boat. You don't always make friends. And after eight years, I made a, I made a few that didn't like it. But I'm an issue by issue guy. Uh, look at the issue, get the information I can, and I vote on that issue. And if the person doesn't agree with me, they can try to persuade me, I can try to persuade them. But at the end of the day, the next day, it's another vote, it's another issue. I don't hold a grudge against that person. I don't, uh, you know, you can't move the city forward. And in the last eight years, I've helped move Benton forward a lot. Uh, you know, being a small business, I'm passionate about job growth and jobs. Uh, campaigned and worked for the Benton Event Center to come here. And, and that was tough because I was a member of the Tea Party and you're talking about me promoting and asking for a tax. Well, that was going to the people for a vote. And, but I was uh, passionate about that. I thought it could help the city grow and it could help Saline County. Then I put my money behind it and I created an event there and held the first event there, the Saline County Gun Enough Show, so that thousands of people could come there and see our city and our county. And now we do it three times a year, three or 4,000 people come from all over the state, two hours away, love the city, love the venue. And, uh, and, I, and I take the people from Saline County. I want to promote businesses here, even outside. So when I go to other cities and have events, I bring Saline County businesses with me. Uh, you know, whether it's a restaurant or whether it's tables or whatever they rent, or you know, I, I take uh, teenagers and I try to teach them work ethics. When I grew up, I grew up with nothing. My mom had brain surgeries, uh, my dad, uh, Christmases, church had to come bring us some Christmas presents. So I, I look at everybody the same. I don't care how much money you got, Everybody puts their britches on one leg at a time. I listen to every issue. I don't care if they, they have dirty jeans on and holes in them. They're just as important on what their topic is as somebody who's in a suit. And, and that's the way I treat people. That's the way I, uh, I expect others to treat. That's how I'm different in politics. And, um, and I know you, sometimes it costs you votes, but I make them tough choices. I've done it for eight years on city council. Uh, with the jobs, I was uh, nominated, uh, named 2017 Entrepreneur of the Year by the Saline Courier for bringing businesses and people in and, uh, and creating jobs. You know, having the teenagers come and work for me, and I bring them across the state, teaching them hard ethics. I get on them when they're not working. That's how I learn. You, you, you earn an honest day's pay, and hopefully they'll become entrepreneurs. If I have young kids that want to come in, I'll let them come in my show cheap for nothing son so that they can create and get that business minded to help because that's how we're going to lift people up i'm not for handouts <laughs> i'm not for taxes i'm for helping somebody that needs to uh, a handout you know you're going to help them up not just give them something for free um you got the cards on there i'm christian conservative values i told you about transgender bathrooms other stuff so pro-life <laughs> My time's up. <laughs> Go to the website, check it out. If you don't know me, I help conservatives all over. I got Tim Griffin and others, other reps. <laughs> they have five each, the state reps did. But uh, we're really tickled to have these two candidates running for Kim's spot, I tell you. Um, I know they're going to have a Democrat, whoever wins the primary is going to have a Democrat opponent. We're going to work our tail off to make sure whoever wins our Republican primary is the next state representative. So let's give them both a round of applause. Okay, next up. We're not giving them quite as much time since Justice Defeats is not as big a, a <coughs> 
two minutes. <laughs> You're not making the rules here. Sorry. They have two minutes each. They also drew four positions. And first up, Barbara Hall. Barbara. Thank you. I'm Barbara Howell. I've lived out at Lake Norwell for 25 years. My family is still with me tonight. My husband uh, was a member of this committee until he passed away three months ago. And this is my granddaughter, Catherine Ann Reeves. Come on up here, Catherine Ann. She wore the same t-shirt, a little smaller one, at the age of three when I first started campaigning. And she's now, she just turned 18 last week. I remember going to my first Lincoln Day dinner at the La Quinta Inn at Otter Creek 14 years ago. When I joined the committee, somebody talked me into joining the committee because I'd been doing a lot of stuff at Lake Norwell. And when Rockefeller was there, and we all got to take our picture with him. Anybody remember that? That was a wonderful event. The very next year, they conned me into doing the Lincoln Bay Dinner. I'm like, what? They said, well, you do all this stuff at Lake Norwell. I did it at Bikeside Community Center all by myself. Because back then, we didn't have all these event centers and places to have them. So I was struggling to find a place, and the Bikeside Community Center was where we had it that year. I'm honored to be one of the first female elected to the Lane County Forum Court during the period when the composition changed from the Democrat to Republican majority. I'm especially proud to say that I had a hand in stabilizing that change to lead to a smoother running Forum Court in which it ultimately goes with Lane County. And I'm verified, I think, by our county clerk here that I'm the longest running Republican female, 14 years. I've been on the phone board. And I love helping people. That's what they all say about where I live at Lake Norwell, and my husband said that too. I love helping people and love working with all the other JPs to help this county run smoothly. Thank you. And next up, Bobby Collison. Bobby, let's give him a round of applause. I like the outfit here. <laughs> we didn't coordinate. I'm Bobby Collison. I live out of Lanesville Drive off uh, Conville Ferndale. I've uh, been a resident of Saline County for 30 years. Uh, I was born and raised in northeast Arkansas. Uh, moved to Saline, I mean to uh, Little Rock in 1980 and went to work for the Little Rock Police Department after doing three years of law enforcement in northeast Arkansas. Uh, spent 26 years at Little Rock Police Department. I worked uh, about every division they have over there. When I retired, I was the sergeant over the burglar squad. Uh, I was out in law enforcement about six and a half years. Uh, <coughs> got to where I couldn't catch fish very good, so I went back to work in the Saline County Sheriff's Office, and I just retired from there in December. Uh, and while I was there for that six years, I got to go all over this county and see what was going on, what was being done, what what wasn't being done, and um, I you know, thought, well, if you want to make change, you got to get out there and get yourself out there and get involved in it, so here I am today. My education background, I have a uh, degree in law enforcement. My bachelor's pursuit was criminal justice and political science, and I've got 138 hours of college, so I can at least read and write. <laughs> <laughs> so but anyway, and Ms. Howell, thank you for your service, you know, but. This is nothing personal against you. It's just I feel I have some things that I would like to see done in this county, so here I am. Thank you. I'm happy to report that no one else filed for that position, so whoever wins that one is going to be our Justice of the Peace from District 4, right? Okay, got some great candidates running this year, and because of that, Steven, since you're such a good timekeeper, I'm going to get you to come up as soon as you get that Frito in your mouth. Or <laughs> Bugle. Bugle. Hold this up on there. I'm going to start. We're going to talk a little bit here about our budget. As we mentioned in our last meeting, we told you we